Nick is preaching to us. Okay, let's sit up straight. Let's pay don't attention. Get up. Just set your stuff down when you're done. Don't yeah, up. you don't have to get up, okay? And That's if fine. you do not mind, I'm going to get one myself. No, I don't mind. Do you want to use this mic, Pastor? Is the cordless there or do you use it? Yeah. The cordless is. Put on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm really jealous. Man, that looks so good. I don't have one. Whew. I'll tell you what. At least save at least one of those over there for me, all right? Whew. I'll tell you what. All right. Can you guys pay attention while you're eating brownie and ice cream? Of course. Yes, I can. Yes. All right. Good. All right. Listen, I want to kind of go over what Pastor Price went over with you again. I want to say it in a little bit of a different way. And then I want to give you an opportunity tonight to make a very important decision, okay? So, even though you're eating, I want everybody to look up here for a second. Everybody looking up here? Not everybody. All right, look up here. Let's bow our heads and let's pray, okay? Father, thank you for the time that we have to sit under the preaching of your word. Lord, we ask that you would work in our lives now. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. John chapter 3 says this. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. All right, now you all just heard the story where Jesus has been talking to this man by the name of Nicodemus, and he takes him back to that passage there from Numbers. He took him to the Old Testament, a passage that Nicodemus would have been very familiar with. He would have been very familiar with the story uh, that Pastor Price just told you. Uh, Nicodemus would have been a scholar of the Old Testament. It would have been very, very familiar to him, even though he didn't quite understand the truths of it, okay? Now, I just want to kind of go through that story again, because we played chaos in between, and I don't know, maybe your brain got scrambled and you forgot already what we talked about, okay? But the nation of Israel, they were wandering around, right, in the wilderness, okay? They were discouraged because of the way, you remember that? And then these fiery serpents were sent among them by God. And so, the nation of Israel had a serious, serious problem. Did they not? Yeah. There were all these fiery serpents that were biting them, and uh, you know that venom uh, acted like that fire in their body. They felt that, and uh, they were called those fiery serpents for that reason. Okay, they had a serious problem. All right. So the first thing I see from that that we need to learn is that the nation of Israel had a problem. Okay. Now, the second thing we need to learn from that is that. There was a very serious punishment, okay, or a very serious consequence, all right, for the problem that they had. All right, now, we talked about it earlier. If they got bitten by the serpent, what happened to them? They died. They died, okay. Um, you know, this was a very long time ago. Um, this is thousands and thousands of years ago. They didn't have hospitals then. They didn't have health insurance then. Uh, they didn't have uh, many of the different places that we have uh, today to be able to go and get health care. They're in the middle of the wilderness, okay? Listen, if they got bitten by this snake, it was a serious problem. Um, it was over for them. I don't know of a better way to say it. Uh, if you got bitten by one of these snakes, you might as well just say your goodbyes because you were going to die. There was nothing they could do about it, okay? Now, let's suppose that a person got bit by one of those fiery serpents and they decided that they were going to do everything that they could, okay, to survive. Now, if you had gotten bit by a snake and you couldn't go to the hospital, what's some, something that you would try to do? Somebody shout it out. What would you try to do if you got bit by a snake? Suck the poison. Yeah. Suck the poison out? Yeah. Oh, that's great. All right, you got poison in your leg. Now you're going to suck it down your throat. And after that's going to help a lot. All right, so you can try. All right, to suck the poison out of your leg. Maybe you could have a really good friend or a parent or something, and you could have them suck the poison out of your leg for that snake bit. Maybe they would die too, okay? Now listen, you could try that if you wanted, okay? But the Bible says if they had gotten bit, they were going to die. What else could you do? Cut your leg off. You could cut your leg off. That's right. Hey, hey, if I got bit on my ankle by one of those snakes, and everybody that I saw was getting bit, and they were all dying, if I got bit on my ankle, I think I might try to cut my leg off. Exactly. So that I could try to survive. But what does the Bible say? It didn't matter what they did, right? They died. What else could you do? Pray. Pray. Read your Bible underwater. What's that? Read your Bible underwater. Read your Bible underwater. That's right. You can play a game of chaos just for fun. I mean, I don't know what it matters. I mean, you can spend the last few minutes of your life however you wanted to. There was nothing that you could do. You could elevate it. You could put a tourniquet around it. You could do whatever there was that you could think of, all right? 
The Bible says, very simply, if you got bitten by a snake, you were going to die. Let's go looking out the windows, please. Everybody looking up here. All right, eating, having a good time. All right, but you're paying attention to the preaching, okay? All right, so here it is. The nation of Israel, they had a serious problem. These snakes had been sent among them, okay? The consequence of that problem was very serious as well. They were going to die, okay? The third thing I want you to understand is that there was nothing that they could do in and of themselves to save themselves. Does that make sense to everybody? They could try anything that they wanted. They were welcome to try, okay? But it was a done deal. If you got bitten by a snake, the venom was going to run its course, and they were going to die. So there was nothing that they could do to save themselves, okay? Now, what did they need? They needed a miracle, didn't they? Yeah. They needed a Savior. And so they did. somebody said they could pray. Well, what they did was they asked Moses to intercede for them, okay? Moses went to God... And God gave him a very simple plan. He said, listen, I want you to build a, a, a brazen serpent, okay? And I want you to put it on that pole in the center of camp. And uh, this is how it's going to work. Uh, whenever somebody gets bitten by a snake, if... Boy, that's a big word. It's only two letters long. But boy, what a big word. The word if. If they look at the snake, if they believe God's plan that He gave them, all right, for their salvation, if they would believe that if they looked at the snake, then they would live. Well, I'll tell you what. If you were in the nation of Israel, and these snakes were biting you, and all of your friends were dying, and all of a sudden you heard about the good news, about this brazen serpent being lifted up into the, in the middle of the camp, and you got bitten by a snake, man, whew, I'd be looking at that snake, wouldn't you? I would want to survive, okay? So we see this terrible predicament the nation of Israel was in. They had a very serious problem. The consequence of that problem was death. And there was nothing that they could do in and of themselves to save themselves. Okay, So they cried out for help. Moses provided a way by lifting up the serpent. And now if they looked, okay, they would live. Okay? Now, no questions. If what would happen, all right, we talked about this when Pastor Price was preaching. Let's say that Kelly here got bitten by a snake. And Kelly had heard, okay, Kelly had heard that the snake was lifted up. But she decided that wasn't true, and she didn't look for the snake. What was going to happen to Kelly? She would die. Okay, it was just a done deal. That's the way it happened. Okay. Now let's uh, let's suppose this. Let's suppose, by the way, that Daniel here. Everybody listening up here? I know you just had brownies play chaos, right? Everybody, let's let's suppose that Daniel just got bitten by a snake. All right. He hadn't heard yet. He hadn't heard about the good news of of the snake being lifted up in the middle of the serpent, and and Kelly had heard. Okay. But what if Kelly didn't tell Daniel about the good news of the serpent? What would happen to Daniel? He would die. He would die. Now, does that mean that the solution wasn't there? No. It was. It was there, wasn't it? But he just didn't know about it because she didn't tell him. Okay? So, you know, there were a lot of people, whenever that snake got lifted up, you know, they didn't have TV, they didn't have radio back then, but there was a couple of million people out there wandering in the wilderness. How did everybody find it? How did everybody find out the good news about the snake. Well, you had to talk to each other, right? And you had to tell everybody that you knew about the good news that God had provided a way of salvation for them to be rescued from this terrible problem that they had. Okay, now, back in the New Testament, we have uh, Jesus here, and he's talking to Nicodemus, and he tells Nicodemus, you have to be born again. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, Nicodemus replies with the funniest statement. Uh, when Jesus says, hey, you must be born again, he says to Jesus, he says, how can I, as an old man, go back into my mother's womb and be born again? Okay, he didn't understand. All right, he thought that uh, he was talking about being born twice physically, okay? And Pastor Price mentioned very well that it's not just physical birth that we're talking about, but we're also talking about spiritual birth. Now, that poses a question. Why do we need to be born spiritually? Okay, that's a very good question. Okay? Well, now, there's a reason that Jesus took Nicodemus to that Old Testament story. Because those points from the Old Testament story of the serpent being lifted up into the wilderness, they parallel our situation today. Okay? Now, the first thing we learned about the nation of Israel, they had a serious what? Problem. They had a serious problem. Okay? These snakes were biting them. Okay? Now, every person in this room today, you have a very serious problem. The problem, the Bible calls it, is that you are a sinner. Now, sin is simply breaking God's commandments. All right? In other words, I'm saying no one in this room is perfect. Okay? The Bible says, thou shalt not lie. Is there anybody in here 
who has never once in their life told a lie. You've never once in your life told a lie. All right, my hand's not up either. Interesting, Pastor Price's hand's not up. Mrs. Price, your hand wasn't up either. That's amazing. You know what that means? We're in a room Those full of liars. Right there, All right? so yeah, I know. But I bet he's told a lie. He just told a lie just now when he said, I've never lied before, okay? All right? Now listen. How many lies, hey, hey, guys, how many lies do you have to tell before you're a liar? One. 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 All right, so everybody in this room is a liar. You have a serious problem because you are a sinner. You have offended God. You have broken His laws, okay? The Bible says, thou shalt not steal. How many people in this room have never taken something that wasn't theirs? You've never taken an answer off the test. You've never looked at something when you shouldn't have, all right? I bet you, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Listen, everybody in this room, listen, guys. Everybody in this room, you've taken something that wasn't yours before. Now, how many times do you have to take something that wasn't yours? How many times do you have to steal before you're a thief? Once. Just once, right? Every person in this room is a liar. Every person in this room is a thief. You know, the Bible says this, Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. You ever done that before? You ever done that before? I said yeah. that just earlier. You know what the Bible calls that? And this is very serious. Listen, the Bible calls that blasphemy. Okay? That's a terrible, listen, that's a terrible, wicked sin. And the Bible says that you will give an account for using the Lord's name in vain. Okay? So, by admittance here, by just a couple of questions, you're all liars, you're all thieves, and you're all blasphemers. Listen, that's pretty bad, isn't it? That's pretty bad. The Bible also says that you should honor your mother and your father. Have you ever disrespected your parents? Yeah. You know what we all have, haven't we? You know what the Bible calls that? The Bible calls that sin. The Bible calls that sin. Okay. Now so listen, we have a very serious problem. The problem is, is that we are all sinners and we've all broken God's laws. Okay? And we can laugh, we can giggle about it, but listen, it is not fun. It's not fun. The only way that we think that being a sinner is funny is because we don't understand really how bad it is. So let me explain to you how bad it is. Now, in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel, okay, if they had gotten bitten by a snake, they had the serious problem, what was going to happen to them? They were going to die, weren't they? Now, what happens to us because we're sinners? We're going to die, Okay. Now, the Bible talks about two deaths. There's one death, that's a physical death, and then the Bible talks about a second death. That's the way it's referred to in the book of Revelation. The second death, okay? Now, let me tell you just a little bit about that. If you live your life and you never trust Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you will stand before God one day and you will give an account to Him of your life. And God will have a detailed record. It says that He has many books that are in those books are recorded every sin that you've ever committed. Every single one of them. And God will go down that list and He will go through every single one of your sins and He will use those sins to determine your degree of punishment in hell. The Bible says that if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that you will spend forever in a real, literal place called the Lake of Fire. It's depicted back there on that poster. How serious is your sin? Your sin is serious enough to put you in that lake for all of eternity. You know what? That's pretty serious, isn't it? Yeah. And the Bible says, based off of what sins you've done, your degree of suffering in hell will be determined by the exact actions that you have done in your life. Now, just a question. How many of you want to stand before God, hear that you are going to be cast into hell because you've never trusted Him as your Savior, and hear that everything that you've ever done, every sin that you've done, every, everything that you've stole, every time that you've taken the Lord's name in vain, every time that you've disrespected your parents, every time you didn't come to church and you should have, how many times, I mean, do you want to stand before God and give an account of those things? And then for Him to issue to you your eternal destination and suffering based exactly upon what you've done in your life. Do you want to do that? No. Listen, I don't want to do that. This is how serious our sin is. It's very serious to God. When God created the earth, it was perfect. When God created Adam and Eve, they were perfect. There was no sin. God was able to come down. He was able to walk with mankind. That's what He originally intended. But man messed it up because we broke the one rule that God had for us. Okay, And ever since then, man's been breaking his rules. So we're all sinners in this room. 
I'm a sinner, Pastor Price is a sinner, and everybody in this room is a sinner. And when we are born into this world, we are born spiritually dead because of our sin. Okay, We have a serious problem, and the consequence of that problem is not only physical death, but spiritual death being cast into a place called the lake of fire for all of eternity. Okay, Now, you remember when I was talking to you about the nation of Israel in the wilderness? And uh, when I said, okay, they got bitten by the snake, and uh, so they decided that uh, maybe they could uh, chop off their leg or whatever it is, that no matter whatever it is that they did, they could not save themselves. You remember that part? Okay, now the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that salvation is not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, let me tell you what that means. That means that you cannot do anything to be saved in and of yourselves. This is a bad, serious problem, okay? This is what a lot of people think. When they hear that they're a sinner, when they hear that they've offended God, they think to themselves, well, I need to make up to God for the bad that I've done, and I need to do a bunch of good. Man, I need to start going to church. I need to give money to the church. I need to start being nice to my parents. I need to quit lying. I need to quit cheating. I need to quit stealing. I need to quit blaspheming. Man, I need to do all these things. Man, I'm just going to be good from this point and forward, and that way, whenever I stand before God, I'll be able to show Him all the good things that I've done in my life. Okay? And you know what's amazing about that? The Bible says it's not by works. It's not by works. You can't get rid of your sin. You can't get rid of it. You can't cover it up by doing good. Does the fact that you have done good works remove the fact that you are a liar, a cheater, a thief, and a blasphemer? No. Absolutely no, it does not. Good works do not take away sin. Can you say that with me? Good works do not take away sin. All right, this is what so many people think today, young people, and it's just not true. The Bible says you cannot earn your way to heaven. It just cannot be done. So that puts us in a pretty bad spot, doesn't it? It's almost like an exact parallel of what was happening to the nation of Israel. They had been bitten by the snake. They knew they were going to die, and there was nothing they could do to save themselves. Well, you all have been bitten by the snake of sin, if I can say it that way. Okay? We are all sinners. Okay? We are all going to die. The Bible says every single one of us deserves to be cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. And the Bible says there's nothing that you and I can do to earn our way to heaven. Boy, I'm telling you, that's a horrible spot to be. But there was some good news in that Old Testament story from the nation of Israel. It wasn't there. All right, so the nation of Israel, they cried out to Moses, and God provided for them a way of salvation. All right, so the brazen serpent was lifted up in the middle of the camp, and it was a very simple truth. God said, if you'll look to the snake that's been lifted up, you'll be, you'll be healed. And the words that Pastor Price says, you would live. You would survive. You would live. Okay. Now, the Bible says in John chapter 3, when John is telling Nicodemus, who was very familiar with this Old Testament story, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, when was the Son of Man lifted up? When was he lifted up for everybody to see? When he was crucified on the cross. That's when he was lifted up. Now let me ask you a question. Did Jesus ever sin? No. Was Jesus the Son of God? Yes. Was he absolutely perfect? Yes. I mean, he never did anything wrong. Is that what you're telling me? That's exactly right. That's exactly what the Bible says. It says that Jesus Christ was without sin. He was the perfect sacrifice for you and me. He had to be perfect. He was the Son of God. He came here. He wasn't born so that we could just celebrate His birth on Christmas. When Jesus came here, He was born so that He could grow up, so that He could die on that cross. And the whole purpose was so that He could be lifted up. Now, I want to tell you a Bible verse, and I just want to read it to you because it is, it is the most powerful truth in the whole entire Bible because it tells us what happens whenever Jesus Christ was lifted up. Okay, It's in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. All right? But I want everybody just to listen. Can you imagine with me, look at it in your mind's eye, make it, imagine Jesus Christ hanging there on the cross. Do you, understand, do you, do you see it? Right? Do you have Jesus? He's dying on the cross. Do you see it in your mind? Okay. Now, is he dying there for his sins? No, he had no sins, right? What was happening to Jesus Christ when he was crucified on that cross? Here it is. 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse 24 says this, Who his own self, this is speaking of Jesus, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, 
that we, being dead to sin, should live in righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Now listen, this is an amazing truth, okay? This is the reason uh, that I'm here this week, because I want to share this with you, okay? All right? So here it is. We've got Jeff sitting right here on the front row, right? Jeff is a sinner, all right? Now the Bible says that he knew all about Jeff, even though this happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus was lifted up on the cross, okay? Here's what the Bible says. Jesus is dying on the cross. Jesus has been crucified. He's been lifted up for all men to see. God the Father, in His providence, reaches down and He takes all the sins off of Jeff. He takes all the sins off of me. He takes all the sins off of Pastor Price. He takes all the sins off of every person that has ever lived. And He places them onto Jesus Christ. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? And then, it gets even more amazing. Okay? Because Jesus died in our place. You know, listen, it, it, it should have been me that was hanging on that cross. My sins put Jesus there. Your sins put Jesus there. And God the Father punished Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, for all of your sins and for all of my sins. He punished Him for what we have done wrong. Now, because of that, Jesus Christ died and was buried in the grave, and He paid the sin debt that you owe to God. And then the Bible says, Three days later, he was resurrected from the grave, and today he sits on the right hand of the Father in heaven. That is a glorious truth. Now, what I've just told you is kind of interesting, and people get kind of confused about it, because they hear this preach, and they say, well, Jesus Christ paid the sins for everyone in the whole entire world, so therefore, well, I guess everybody's going to heaven. Is that right? No, no that's not right. The snake was lifted up, but you know what? The nation of Israel had a personal responsibility when they were bitten to look for the snake, didn't they? They had to decide for themselves that they believed that if they looked at that snake, they would receive life. It is the same way with the gospel. It is the same way with the fact that Jesus Christ has died for everybody's sins in this room. You have to make a personal decision. It's not the fact that your parents believe. It's not the fact that you come to this church. It's none of those things. You have to decide for yourself that you have to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. And if you will look to Jesus, that's all it is. If you will look to Jesus, He'll forgive you of your sins. And you can have a home in heaven. Now that's some good news, isn't it? You know what, if I was in the nation of Israel and all my friends were dying, and I heard about a good news about that serpent being lifted on the snake, uh, up on that pole, that it, I'd be looking to it. Right? Well, here we have it. We have this same parallel for us in the New Testament in our lives today. Okay? We all have a serious problem. We've all sinned. Because of our sin, we deserve to spend an eternity in hell. The Bible says there's nothing good that we can do to earn our own way to heaven. The Bible says the only way we can get to heaven is because of what Jesus Christ has done for us when He was lifted up on that cross. We have to believe in what He did for us. His works, not our own. We have to look to Him. And you know what? If you've never done that before, you can do that tonight. Okay? Now I'm just going to keep belaboring the point because I like to do that, okay? But I want to show you an illustration just to make it absolutely perfectly clear what I'm asking you to do, okay? Now I want to I want to take this hand right here, and I want this hand to represent you and me. Alright? Everybody got it? Who's this? You and me. me. Alright, this is me and you. Alright? Now this is my black wallet. We're going to let this represent sin, okay? It's black, dirty, disgusting, okay? Now the Bible says that we're all sinners, right? So here we are. And the Bible says that we all have sin on us. You with me? The Bible says because of our sins, we have to die, and we have to go to a place called hell, and we have to spend an eternity there because of our sin. Okay? Now, a lot of people think that it's good works, you know, that you've got to do good things. So here we are. Here's our sin, and uh, we're going to do good things. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go to church. Okay? We're going to actually read our Bible, maybe even a waterproof one because it's really cool. Right? Uh, we're going to do things like come to youth revival here at this church, and uh, we're going to we're going to come to youth group on a on a regular occasion, and uh, we're even going to go with Pastor Price every now and then down to the church in Miami, and uh, you know what? We're going to do other things. We're going to be really nice to our parents, and we're not going to do bad things, okay? But you know what? All those good things, but what's still there? Sin. Sin is the problem. Good works are great, okay, but they don't take away the sin. We need something to take away the sin. Okay? So here's the way that the Bible tells it. Let this hand represent Jesus Christ. Okay? Here we are. Here's our sin. Jesus Christ 
He comes to this earth. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Okay? Jesus Christ lived a perfect, sinless life. He was lifted up on that tree, and God the Father reached down from heaven. He took your sin off of you, and He put it onto Jesus Christ. That's an amazing truth. That's an amazing truth that everybody in this room needs to understand. Okay? Now, God the Father punished Jesus Christ for our sin so that He died. He paid for our sin death. And then the Bible says that He rose again three days later, victorious over sin and over death. Now the Bible simply says this. Here we are. If we will just look to Jesus, it's that easy. If we will just believe that He did that for us, the Bible says He'll save us. He'll forgive us of our sin, and when we die, we'll spend an eternity with Him. If you've never done that before, I want to give you a chance to do that tonight. Okay? Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to stay right where you're sitting. Have a very serious time here. I wonder if there's somebody here and you say, you know what, I've never done that before. I see that I have a very serious problem. I see that I'm a sinner. I see that because I'm a sinner, because I've broken God's commandments, that I deserve to go to hell when I die, and I'm scared about that. And I also see that I can't do anything good to get to heaven on my own. The only way I can get to heaven is by trusting what Jesus did for me. You know, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'd like to give you a chance to do that right now. You can do it right where you sit, right with your eyes closed, nobody's looking around, okay? If you would like to trust Christ as your Savior tonight from sin and hell, you can just simply tell Him. You can just simply pray to God. Praying, praying to God is just talking to God. You can say something like this to Him. You can say, Dear God in heaven, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve to go to hell because of my sin. God, I know good works won't save me. I, I can't do anything to get there. But Father, I know that Jesus Christ was lifted up on that cross. And right now, the best way I know how, I just call out for you to save me. Now, just so I can know and so I can pray for you and I can rejoice with you, is there anybody in here tonight and you prayed to God and you asked Him to save you tonight? If you did, would you just slip your hand up right where you sit? Nobody looking around? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Hands down. Listen, that's wonderful, young people. Everybody look up here for a second. There was quite a number of people that raised their hands tonight. And I'm excited about that. Okay? But I want to I just want to share something with you. I got married about 15 years ago. And I'm pretty excited about being married. You know what? I've got a beautiful wife, got two wonderful kids. And you know what? I wear this, what is this? Red ring. I wear this red ring, right? Because I'm with my wife now. I want everybody to know it. I want everybody to know it. I wear this ring very proudly. When I'm with my wife, I put my arm around her. I act like I love her. I do love her. I hold her hand, right? I want people to know that I'm married. I want people to know it. If you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior tonight, it's kind of like being married. People ought to know that. People ought to know it. So I want to give you a chance here. It just I'm, I don't normally do this, but you know what? I'd like to give you a chance. If you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior tonight and you'd like to stand up and publicly testify and say, you know what? I believed in Jesus Christ tonight to forgive me of my sins so that I will be able to spend an eternity in heaven when I die. I want to give you a chance to stand up and testify about that. Not that you have to say anything. I just want you to stand to your feet. Now, would anybody be willing to do that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Would anybody be willing to stand to your feet and say, this is what I did tonight? One. One. Praise the Lord. One. All right, now here's what I'd like for you to do. Okay? When the service is over tonight, thank you for standing up. You can sit back down. When the service is over tonight, there are three men that are standing in the back room. Everybody turn around and look at them. See Mr. Lee? See Pastor Price? See Mr. Tosh? I'd like for you guys who just stood up, I want you to go and I want you to tell them what Jesus Christ did for you in your life today. Okay? Tell them. When you get home, tell your parents and then tell everybody that you know. All right? Listen, if he had been bitten by the snake and she didn't tell him, what would happen to him? Listen, you think that. Well, listen, 
Listen, for those of us who know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we know the story, we know this truth from John chapter 3. It's our job to tell everybody that we know so that then they can also trust Christ as their Savior. Wouldn't that be great? That's all of our jobs. Man, if you trust that Jesus Christ is your Savior, God has put you on His team, and He wants you to tell other people what you just learned so that they can also know. Man, you kids, you ought to storm your schools here in a couple of weeks, and you ought to tell everybody that you know what happened to you here tonight, and you ought to tell them how they can know that they can be saved. You know what? That would be a wonderful thing. That would be, be a wonderful thing. I want you guys to do that. Okay? I don't want you to do it for you. I want you to do it. Because Jesus Christ loves those people that you go to school with. Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you enough to die on the cross for you, and He loves you enough. He loves those people that you know enough. He died for them too. And He wants you guys to tell them. You know, I can't tell them. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go back to South Carolina. I, can't, I, I don't know your friends, but you do. And you can reach them for Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, I thank you for what you've done tonight. Lord, we give you the glory and the honor. Thank you for your word. Thank you for telling us, Lord, that your son was lifted up on a cross, Lord, so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you stood up, I want you to go back to the back. I want you to talk to these guys. I want you to tell them what God did in your life today, okay? Thank you all for listening. And um, Pastor Price, um, is there something else scheduled for the evening? Or the shootout. The shootout. All right, for just a few minutes. Let's, uh, let's take five or ten minutes here and uh, give people a minute just to take a minute and talk to uh, those at the back, and then we'll have at the shootout so we can go tonight.